Before we get into any of the actual troubleshooting or work, I just want to say I'm not an HVAC guy. I don't even play one on TV. And there's dangerous stuff in these things. They could explode. You could shock yourself. You could carbon monoxide everybody. So take these directions with a at-risk disclaimer, as you would with any do-it-yourself home repair. So with that, let's get into it. I'm in my basement right now. I woke up this morning and it was 57 in the house. Of course, since it's the middle of the winter, the furnace has gone out. All right, so I'm down here. I got the panels off so we can look into the furnace and do some troubleshooting. When I started trying to figure this out, the first thing I did was cycle the thermostat. And when I cycled the thermostat, I came down here and I heard the furnace buzz, but I didn't actually hear any air moving. Rather than a buzz, you should hear the draft motor kick on, which will sound like a motor running with some air movement, but less than the full-on blower running. This is a high-efficiency furnace, and high-efficiency furnaces, again, I'm not an HVAC person, so I could be totally wrong, the exhaust gas on them doesn't have enough heat to actually get all the way out, and if the exhaust gases don't get out, then they fill your house with carbon monoxide. That's why these high-efficiency furnaces have these draft motors in them that basically suck the exhaust gas out. And they go out up to the uh, exhaust up here and out the side of the house. On a conventional furnace, there's enough waste heat to carry the exhaust gases out. This is a pretty common problem on furnaces. I remember my parents had the same problem with their furnace, and now mine has this as well. Okay, so as far as the troubleshooting steps, turned it on, I heard it buzz, I didn't hear any air moving. My furnace has a little circuit board in it. I think most of the modern furnaces and even the not so modern furnaces have a little circuit board in them for helping you to troubleshoot. This is the circuit board that's in my furnace. And you can see there's a little LED on it. That little LED will blink a trouble code. So if we just turn on the furnace, One, two, three. The trouble code it's blinking is three blinks. You may have to look up a manual online, but in my case, the back of the furnace door actually has all the info that you need on it. As you can see, it's got some trouble codes. Three flashes corresponds to pressure switch stuck open. So that blink code that it's giving us tells us pressure switch stuck open. Uh, there's two pressure switches, it looks like on this furnace, that are coming down through these two vacuum lines. And the pressure switch that it's talking about is the pressure switch that comes off of this draft motor. Since the draft motor is kind of a safety device, it prevents the house from filling with carbon monoxide, the first thing these furnaces do is turn it on before turning the blower and the burners on to make sure that there is a vacuum to suck the gases out before they're created. Now, if the switch was bad, the blower motor or this draft motor would run, generate the necessary suction to suck it out, but the switch would stay open. So. What the circuit board is saying is, I'm providing power to this draft motor, but I'm not seeing any suction. That could either mean the switch is bad, or it could mean the, the motor is bad. Or the bearing, you know, this piece is bad. So to try to troubleshoot that, there's two things that I came up with. Uh, one, you could put a clamp meter on this and see how much current the motor is taking. That would tell you at least whether or not this is getting powered. And then if you know that there's power coming to this and the motor's not spinning, uh, this is probably the motor bad. Um, I don't have a clamp meter here at home, so what I came up with was this. I got one of these little infrared thermometers, and I lasered the outside of the motor housing. I'm getting like 66 degrees, something around there. If I run the motor by hitting the switch, obviously there's potentially live electricity in here whenever you're troubleshooting something while it's powered. So be really careful about what you're touching. Obviously avoid any exposed wires. In this case, all I'm doing to turn the furnace on and off is there's a safety switch on the front panel that becomes open whenever you take the cover off. I'm just pushing that switch in to turn the furnace on momentarily. Okay, so we saw that the outside of the motor is 67 degrees. Now let's run this and see what temperature it goes up to. The reason I'm doing this is if there's actually motor or power being applied to the motor and the motor is frozen or the coils uh, fused or something like that, 
then this will heat up and that'll tell us that it's getting power. Okay, so it, it went up to about 70. And actually, you, you probably saw when I pressed the switch, the motor just moved a little bit. That's a pretty good sign that the coil is fused or the bearing is bad or something is preventing this motor from spinning. Now that I'm editing this footage and I'm looking back, it doesn't seem as compelling, but when I did my initial troubleshooting before I decided to shoot the video, I cycled the motor several times and I actually got the casing the motor up to like 95 degrees, which in a 57 degree basement is pretty hot. If you don't feel like using the clamp method or the temperature method, you can also take the vacuum line off and suck on it to simulate the suction created by the draft motor. Or you could just jumper out the switch entirely, and in both cases, the blower motor should kick on and the furnace should light. However, you shouldn't run it like this because you don't have the draft motor running and there's nothing to pull the exhaust gases out. So at that point, I decided, okay, we need a new motor in here. Got to get one. It's Saturday. It was already like 11 o'clock. Saturday, very difficult to get any parts for HVAC stuff. People wanted to charge me 150 bucks just to open a warehouse to go look for something and then pay $150 an hour for someone to find the part if they had it. Luckily, I was able to call in a chain of favors, drove 140 miles up north and managed to get a replacement for this. Hopefully in your case, it's not a Saturday, especially not a Sunday. And if not, this is probably gonna be a pretty easy repair. All you're gonna have to do is find the part number on this, call up your local appliance repair place or motor and pump store, give them the part and they can probably find you the right part or cross-reference it to another part that's equivalent. And actually even check Amazon. Amazon had a really good price for this motor but they weren't able to get it to me for four or five days. All right, so now I'm gonna swap the motor out, put the new one in and we'll see if it fires up. Before I finally close it all up, I'm going to just do a quick test. This should be enough hooked up that if this solves the problem, the furnace will fire. Okay, here it goes. Yep, and there she goes. 
<laughs> All right, now I just gotta tighten everything down, close her up, and we are in business. Got it all bundled back together, fires right up, house will be warm in probably an hour or two maybe. Doing this repair myself saved me question mark dollars. I have no idea how much it would have cost to get a HVAC guy out on an emergency call on a Saturday in the middle of the winter. But I know it was more than $93, which is what I paid for that motor and blower assembly. It really didn't take very long to swap out, it was pretty easy to troubleshoot, and I think most people with some mechanical capability, but not a ton, could probably accomplish this pretty easily. Keep in mind, this is just one of the possible problems that you could have indicated by that blink pattern that says pressure switch stuck. You could also have a bad pressure switch, you could have blockage probably in those lines, the vacuum lines. But if it ends up that your draft motor is bad, you probably could do something like what I've done here and save yourself a bunch of money. More like bad man.